Hey everyone, it's your buddy Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be going over the Graphic PvP tier list. So, Graphic is my name. The updated tier list for today is going to cover everything. You know, the meta changes within this last month. Not too much has changed other than the meta. And we're going to talk about what weapons are starting to shine in war, what weapons are starting to shine in Outpost Rush, and what weapons are starting to shine in that open world PvP duels, 1v1s, and obviously, you know, large scale as well, 10v10s, 20v20s like Outpost Rush. So, we're going to cover it all in today's video, and this is all going to be based on level 60 PvP. If you guys want to stay up to date with PvP as well as New World altogether, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on. I want to jump into it today, guys, so I will be doing this one solo today. You know, typically we have another guy that will bring in here. You, you know, in the past we've used Cleo Menace, probably use him again as well, but I do want to kind of get this one up to date and running as quickly as possible so we can do one of these about once per month, giving you guys an updated tier list. So with some of the most recent changes, there wasn't too much. In the last patch notes, if you guys took a look, there wasn't regarding any balance changes when it came to weapons. So this is going to be one of those updated tier lists that's going to be based on a little bit of a manipulation around the meta. We've seen some meta manipulation when it comes down to really like I said wars outpost rush and all of those so I want to kind of jump into today's weapons starting with the very very first one being one of my favorites I've talked about the past you know where rapier has actually kind of been where it's going to be going and you know it's one of those weapons that is so so good for solos when you're thinking of 1v1s when you're thinking of 2v2s when you're thinking of that small scale rapier outshines so many other great great weapons however if you think about it there is great weapons in most situations that will outperform the rapier and that's going to be weapons like the great axe that's going to be weapons like the hammer because they have so much cc and damage the rapier is kind of outclassed in things like war. It's kind of outclassed in things like, uh, you know, those 20 v 20 outpost rushes when it comes to things like great axe. When you're pushing that midpoint and you have a great axe, you clump them all together, you burst them with the fire staff, rise gauntlet. And that's why the rapier is going to continue to be remaining outside of that SA tier. In my opinion, the rapier is a very, very solid weapon still. It's just not quite there yet. And I think this is going to be an obvious choice for me that we're going to kind of put this one in the C tier. And we will be moving these weapons around, by the way. But right now, I want to kind of get all the weapons on the board. And we're going to continue to move things around from a C plus all the way to a C minus, S plus all the way to C S minus, based on, uh, you know, the left side being that kind of plus side and the all the way on the right side being the minus side. So right now we're going to leave it as a kind of a C plus range. And I'm going to try to use more of the columns. I've had this kind of, uh, you know, idea of using S, A, and B, and I never used C in our previous PVP tier list. So I'm trying to mix it up a little bit more. By mix it up, I mean using as many columns as possible with still getting the same information out. So rapier with its current state being a C. And I think it's going to be because, like I said, it doesn't compete with some of the, really some of those other weapons when it comes to level 60, uh, you know, wars, level 60, outpost rush. But if you're doing more of a flank group, you can still make it work. And that's why it's going to be a C plus and not in the D or F column. I want to jump into the next one though. Talked about rapier quite a bit because, you know, like I said, it's the main weapon I use. I love it so much. And I definitely know that you know, I notice when I switch weapons to maybe a great axe that there's a huge difference. So great axe is an obvious one for a lot of people. People are assuming this is going to be an AS tier. Uh, you know, in my opinion, in my past experiences, this weapon is unfortunately a little bit too easy to use right now. And because of that, it's so, so strong with the gravity well, with the charge, the reap, everything that you can really do, the mobility with that ultimate passive being that 30% movement speed bonus when you're looking at somebody within the you know short distance. You're going to have so much chase potential in the open world. You're going to have so much clump potential with the you know grab well. And because of all the mobility, because of all of the grouping AOE damage and the insane damage on the auto attacks or the heavy attacks altogether, this is going to be an obvious S tier for me. And I think, you know, a lot of you guys can probably agree with that one as well. As we move through this tier list, guys, if you guys have any kind of questions or comments, make sure to comment down in the uh, comment section down below because I want to hear your guys' thoughts. If you guys have played level 60 PvP yet, where do you think some of these weapons need to be? And I want to hear your thoughts if you agree, what weapons you disagree, so I can kind of take that into consideration. I'm not obviously going to change that you know, based on your thoughts, but I do want to hear what your thoughts are so I can kind of keep that and evaluate those as well. So bow is going to be the next one in line, right? So bow is going to be a very tricky one because a lot of people think this is probably an A or B tier. And I think typically this is going to be a B tier. 
Um, and there's a lot of reasons because of this. Uh, you know, when, when you think of AOE damage, you don't think of the bow first. You think of maybe the Ice Gauntlet, the Virus Staff. But when you think of the bow, you're thinking more of a 1v1 dual potential build. Um, you know, I've showed you guys the Rapier bow being one of the strongest when it comes to duels. So keep in mind, this is not a dueling PvP tier list. This is a war, outpost rush. Duels are, are a little bit inside of there because, you know, open world comes into play with the PvP tier list as well. But typically... The bow and the rapier are going to be more small scale, and that's why the bow is going to be a B, because when you're looking for AoE damage, you could do the Reign of Arrows, you could do the Poison Shot, but typically you're going to go with something like Pillar of Fire on the Fire Staff, or you're going to go with the Ice Storm on the Ice Gauntlet. So I do want to continue forward and uh, take a look at the next one in line, because this is going to be an obvious one, in my opinion. I think everybody and uh, you know everybody that's played level 60 PvP at the very least knows that Life Staff is way, way too strong right now, and it should actually almost have its own tier list at the top but we're going to actually move it right in front of great axe at the s plus tier and then great axe at the s tier so if you guys keep in mind the left side is going to be the stronger side in my opinion live staff unbelievably strong you can obviously out heal any kind of damage that you're going to put out unless you maybe cc the target for so so long um you know with multiple great axes multiple hammers but for the most part like i said this is an obvious one for me this so far Life Staff has outperformed every other weapon in New World. So next up, I'm not going to talk, by the way, too much about Life Staff because it's a necessity in War. It's a necessity in Outpost Rush. It's a necessity in, you know, anything below, you know, above probably 1v1s and 2v2s when it comes to open world as well. So Life Staff, obviously, a lot of you guys, like I said, will probably agree with that one as well. I want to jump into the next one, though, because that's Hatchet. And Hatchet's a weird, weird spot right now because it does so much damage right now. However, people have been kind of complaining about maybe it being overpowered because of the undying phase and because the berserk being so fast and getting a little heal there. Um, in my opinion, it's very, very hard to use the hatchet on somebody that knows how to play against it because they pop the berserk. You instantly start kiting. You instantly get away from them. You understand the undying. So what's that three seconds really going to do for them? If you're just dodging away while you know, they're on the undying phase, in my opinion, the hatchet's still a strong weapon, definitely still good for wars, definitely still good for some of that open world PVP where you need to just get somewhere quickly. I think it's going to be a B tier. I think this is going to be a solid B. I think it's actually going to outperform the bow in most situations. So the bow is going to go back to a B minus. We're going to have the hatchet at about a B. Um, let me move the hatchet down just a little bit so it looks a little better there. Uh, but like I said, this is the current phase or current kind of setup I'm with right now. I think the hatchet's just a little bit above the bow based on, you know, some of the feedback I've been getting. And I always try to like run these by some other level 60s that have been running PvP for a while, whether it's Wars, Outpost Rush. They've run it all as well. So, you know, looking through this PvP tier list, they've pretty much agreed with what I'm saying here. And I want to talk about the next one in line because this is a <laughs> this is a hammer that does some massive, massive things in wars large scale pvp that is you know when it comes down to solo 1v1s 2v2s it may not be as strong because you don't have a ton of damage output from the hammer you're mostly wasting all of their stamina with the you know the hammer cc like path of destiny and uh you know we've seen how much cc this actually provides like i said with all the hammer abilities being so so cc oriented by the way cc i saw a lot of comments in one of my previous videos that is crowd control so crowd control is making it basically so they have slows they have um you know stuns they have snares they have all this stuff basically it doesn't allow their character to move freely so hammer is going to be one of those that i'm going to put in the a tier or a column right now we'll see if anything kind of moves it away but for now like i said hammer is an obvious choice when it comes to cc when it comes to maybe stopping their healer or doing some big crowd control that's going to remain uh you know a big factor in wars with the great axe hammer being one of the strongest combos right now i think this is going to be a very very solid weapon for most pvp things as we jump into the next one it's going to be the ice gauntlet and a lot of people have been complaining about the ice gauntlet recently if you've ever been in an ice storm or sh uh ice shower either one of those and been getting hit by auto attacks you'll see how much damage they do it's unbelievable the one thing that hurts ice uh or really the ice gauntlet as a whole right now is because you can't stack ice storms on top of each other. So if you throw that big circle ice uh, ice storm on top of another ice storm, they're not going to double the damage. So only one ice storm will actually count towards the AOE damage, which, by the way, area of effect is AOE, if you guys still have that question as well. But, you know, like I said, Ice Gauntlet is so, so strong for a lot of situations. However, it doesn't stack that ice storm. And that's the only reason I was able to take this out of the S tier. 
Typically, I would leave this in S tier for a lot of the smaller scale PvP because you don't really need that Ice Storm to stack. But when it comes to wars, when it comes to Outpost Rush, if you have multiple Ice, uh, you know, ice Gauntlets on the same point, it's not going to do too much for you. So because of that, I'm actually going to be moving the Ice Gauntlet into an a, a, really an A plus tier. And I'm going to move the Warhammer just out of the A plus into about an A. So I'm pretty happy with where we have things right now. I know I have the hatchet at about a B and the uh, you know the bow at right around that B minus range, but we're jumping into a very very interesting weapon, and that's going to be the musket because I figured the musket would play more of a meta role in the current war status. However, muskets are not doing too too much as of right now. I think they still have a great spot in outpost rush if you're able to you know just three four shot their opposing uh, flankers or whatever else. I you know I've seen musket do very very well, but what I have seen is way less use of the musket when it comes to wars. And I think that's because the damage on the nerfs was actually decreased quite a bit coming into release. We saw that in previous patch notes, and I have not seen people pick this up and make very, very big use of it, uh, you know, since. So we'll see what happens with the musket. But for now, I think this is actually going to be in the C plus column. I think this belongs right with the rapier. You know, the big thing that you'll have to remember with the musket is there's no mobility. You have no mobility with the musket. You have traps, sure. Uh, but, you know, your single target traps for the most part. You have a sticky bomb, which could be useful, but... For the most part, it's just going to be outshined. It's going to be outperformed by the bow that has mobility, and it's going to be outperformed and outshined by really any other ranged weapon at this point in time, in my opinion. Or in the you know cool thing about this is, guys, is this is all my you know all my thoughts. This is all my personal thoughts. Remember that we're not always going to agree on everything. We've all had different experiences. We've all seen different fights. We've all seen different PvP in general. But so far, if this is looking pretty good to you guys, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on because we're going to be doing a PvP tier list every single month. Obviously, each month will change quite a bit with patch notes coming on, uh, you know, in the upcoming couple of weeks, I would assume we get some patch notes, maybe some hot fixes, maybe some balance changes. So that's going to be the biggest time where, you know, a lot of this is going to change up. But for right now, it's looking fairly good. And we're on the spear next. So spear is going to be another one that we're going to want to look into because I think spear is another great, great option for when it comes down to 1v1. So if you're using the spear bow, this uh, the rapier bow, those are going to be insanely, insane, insane doling combos. However, right now, I think Spear is outshined by the Rapier. Rapier has such great outplay potential. A bad Rapier and Bow user does lose to a good Rapier. Or sorry, the, uh, what, I, what I'm trying to say here, guys, is the Spear has less of a, in my opinion, has less of a um, you know, skill gap. So what I'm trying to say here is if you have a bad Rapier user and a bad Spear user, typically the bad Spear user will come out of top. It's a fairly, not easy weapon to use, but it's definitely easier than the rapier. The rapier, to make the gray side useful, you know, you have evade that does no damage. You have flesh, which does, you know, fairly decent damage, but you have to get the backstab to really, you know, make the most out of it. And then you also have the repost, which you can use and uh, use very, very terribly sometimes. So there's a lot that really goes into play here. But in my opinion, the spear is underperforming in a lot of aspects right now. I think it's a very, very solid 1v1 weapon, maybe even a 2v2 weapon. But when it comes to things, like I said, outpost rush, when it comes to wars, it's not going to do as much in those 5v5s, 10v10s, 20v20s. However, like I said, it still has a spot in those 1v1s and 2v2s. I do want to jump into the next one because this is a different, uh, and it should be kind of obvious where this one's going, by the way. I kind of left the perfect spot for it. Uh, you know, I started this video out with knowing where Sword and Shield really does belong, in my opinion. I think that's going to be an obvious B+. Sword and Shield is one of those weapons that is definitely needed, and it's, in my opinion, a very, very strong, strong weapon still. I think this is a great, great combo that you're going to want or need in pretty much every setup. So whether you're going with Outpost Rush where you want to hold a point, whether you're going War where you want to remain on the point or just keep you know people away from your siege, I think Sword and Shield is just a great base, a great, really average weapon uh, combo that's going to be needed for definite every single you know, aspect of PVE when it comes to late game. But when it comes to PVP, there's so many, you know, great tank weapons right now that kind of just over overshine the sword and board. So that's going to be the Great Axe. That's going to be the Warhammer. They have so much CC provided there. You know, you're going to need some sword and shield users in war, but like I said, I just think they're over. it's overshadowed by the Warhammer. It's overshadowed by the Great Axe. Those melee weapons, those strength-based melee weapons at the moment are just, like I said, just outperforming in just a couple of aspects. So I do want to jump into the very last one. So this is going to be a weapon that we haven't talked about quite yet in this PvP tier list. I did make a video earlier today talking about what Firestaff users must know. 
if you guys watch that, you'll know how strong this weapon is in Wars. It's one of those combos that, uh, you know, makes me believe it has a spot in this A tier list. So right in the A side, I want to give it an A minus. The only reason it's above the Ice Gauntlet, or sorry, below the Ice Gauntlet is because the Ice Gauntlet provides so much crowd control. And like I said, crowd control is such a big aspect of Wars, such a big aspect of 50v50s, 20v20s right now, because you need to stun that Life Staff user. It's all about kidding that Life Staff user you know, interrupted. It's all about stopping that life staff user from using their abilities and taking them out as quickly as possible. Fire staff is very, very solid. It just doesn't have CC. That's the only reason it's an A minus seven, about an A plus. I think fire staff is going to continue to show up in a lot of metagame when it comes to wars because of that refreshing uh, fire or really refreshing pillar of fire that I talked about in a previous video. I think this is going to continue to remain in the meta when it comes to wars and when it comes to outpost rush. It has that mobility. It has that damage with the fireball, pillar of fire, and burnout being three abilities. Like I said, that I always use and you know I've learned to love. I think you know typically right now with what we're looking at is the in matter of fact you know I'm not too hesitant on anything in my PvP tier list. I'm curious what you guys think, though, because I think Hatchet is going to be one that a lot of people will probably struggle with keeping in that B tier instead of maybe an A. But typically, like I said, right now, Hatchet's not too hard to deal with. If you've played the game enough, if you're level 60, you've dealt with all these weapons probably once or twice before. You know how to play against certain ones. So in my opinion, this is going to be the PvP tier list, the updated version of 10-12-2021. If you guys have any questions, comments, let me know in the comment section down below. I love hearing the comments because this is always something that gets a ton of likes, it gets a ton of dislikes, and a ton of just interaction in general. Because, you know, one thing that uh, a lot of people don't like is, let's say I'm using the spear, and I put the spear at the bottom, and, you know, I put it at C-. A lot of people are probably upset about that, if that's their weapon, or if that's a weapon they just recently died to or got outplayed by. That's stuff that happens. So, you know, keep in mind that I am right now playing typically a rapier bow and a rapier fire staff. So I have a weapon in the C, B, and A. I don't have an S weapon quite yet because, unfortunately, I'm not a life staff user and I'm not a strength based user. So I'm not going to really use that, you know, great axe or life staff. I do think I might integrate a uh, gravity well great axe build with, uh, you know, fire staff in the future just because clumping them up and then bursting them with pillar of fire sounds like a lot of fun to me. But, uh, you know, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, guys. I'll see you all in the next one.